Hi guys and welcome back to the kingdom. I hope you've all had positive and productive weeks this week. So this week we're talking about damsels in distress. Yes, this is everyone's favourite trope to reach for, to try and cry out that something's badly written. Oh my goodness, your female character needs rescuing? Quick, call the trope police. However, hold your horses because I think that people might overreact to this particular trope because actually I think it's a scenario that can breed some unexpected and really interesting drama amongst your group. So without further ado, let's do this. when people talk about damsels in this damsel in distress category they're generally talking about you know pretty much a Disney princess ripped straight out of the 1950s. This girl or child often looks very pretty, has a powerful or rich father and doesn't demonstrate a single brain cell throughout the entirety of the story. For the most part this character seems perfectly content to sit on a shelf, wait around to be rescued and doesn't demonstrate any original personality at all. A good friend of mine said that there's a really good test for this and if you could talk about this character, this damsel, and replace them with valuable treasure or money and it still makes sense, then you've fallen into the trap of writing about a one-dimensional objectified damsel. Also, nine times out of ten, you tend to find out that this damsel is a woman or a child because stereotypically men are expected to be able to at least, at least be semi-competent in a fight. Now, like I said, this is just a nine times out of ten. There are always exceptions. There are always points to break the rule. I'm just saying what I've seen in most of the fiction that I've consumed. Another problem that damsels in distress can face, you take this fully formed, interesting and intriguing character and the moment that they need rescuing, somehow all of that personality, individuality and spunk vanishes and they are perfectly content to sit and wait to be rescued. I don't know about anybody else, whether you've read something similar or watched something similar. I've watched this maybe once or twice, but I find that this scenario where an interesting person turns into a fragile vase, uh, it's just even more frustrating because they know that they have a personality in there somewhere. It's as if they've decided to stop being a character and put themselves on a shelf until the plot needs them again. Because of these two variations, the damsel in distress trope has come to a really bad reputation, which I don't think is fair because done properly, the damsel in distress or needing to be rescued, as I prefer to call it, can actually be a really interesting tool to use to explore dynamics in the group, breed drama and change up scenarios. Firstly, you've got your damsel and how they handle being in distress. Firstly, something really interesting is how a damsel handles themselves in this distressing situation. Particularly if they've never been without the group before. Do they try and trick the bad guy? Do they try and mount an escape attempt? Do they slip vital information outside of the compound? Who do they talk to whilst they're in captivity? What are their days like? How does this affect them mentally? How does this affect them emotionally? A couple of short scenes showing that this person is still a person and they are still trying to fight and survive on their own is really important even if they fail and failing is okay. Demonstrate to your readers that this person isn't just resigned to walk the plank and let it be, let it be without screaming and kicking because this is a real human being, a real person and they're in trouble so they're probably going to try and find a way out of trouble. Now the absence of this character can also have another really interesting effect on the group of people that are left behind. What is the new dynamic like now that this person is no longer there? Do people start to argue? Do things start to fall apart? Or do more positive things start to happen? Does one character realise that they're in love with the damsel? Or does someone who was part of the team that previously hated interacting with people suddenly start pitching in because the damsel is awesome and ultimately the character learns the value of teamwork? I don't know, but you get the idea. There are some good things and some bad things that can change in the dynamic between the remaining characters and how that can move and shift a story in different directions and show characters in a different light. And obviously this damsel in distress situation can lead to some pretty awesome escape scenes. Does the damsel break out halfway through and the gang is completely confused about where they are and now they're running around the castle trying to find this person who wasn't where they were supposed to be? Now of course I'm not saying at any point in this video that the damsel has to rescue themselves. They can be rescued, there is nothing wrong with being rescued, but you can have some fantastic rescue scenes that defeat the standard trope. It can be a catalyst for the damsels to learn some new things about themselves and about the group or things they might need later down the line. Same goes for the people that are doing the rescuing. It can be a catalyst. People can grow and change and discover more about themselves and about others. Now, of course, I'm not saying everyone should just break out on their own because there are 
that would be kind of, you know, boring or repetitive after a while. Now, I'm not saying that everyone needs to break out on their own. Absolutely not. Everyone can wind up in a situation where they need to some rescuing every now and again. And that would mean that your characters aren't you know, invulnerable and all-powerful and honestly that would be kind of boring to read about. Not everyone is entirely self-sufficient and completely invulnerable and to be honest with you, if every single character in your story is like that, that's kind of boring. So absolutely, it's okay for them to be rescued. Plus, if you think about it, if they were so self-sufficient, why were they captured in the first place? But it's actually also a great reminder for your audience as well as character development that, you know, they're not doing it alone. They do have people that are going to come and rescue them. The team coming to rescue them can be a heartwarming moment and can be a great way to do the whole teamwork is awesome and friendship is the best sort of storyline feeling inside your novel, even if it's just for a short second. Now, there are a number of ways where the damsel thing can be flipped and turned on its head. The damsel was evil all along or the damsel was brainwashed and that brings about the whole I know that there's good in you and the power of friendship thing again. Maybe the damsel was bait for a trap and they fall into the trap, but guess what? The damsel has been there for the past three days, known about the trap, and has come up with a plan already. You can have the damsel be kidnapped again or taken by a third party. The villain could take pity on them. You have Stockholm Syndrome. There are lots of different ways that you can play about with the damsel in distress trope and make it unique and interesting to your situation, your characters, and so it isn't like a cookie cutter. Anyway, that's all from me this week. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you have any questions, please them in the comment section down below or hit me up on any of my social media platforms that should be on the screen about now in that sort of area. If you have any topics or questions or things you'd like for me to cover, please let me know because I'm always open to suggestions and I absolutely love feedback. As always guys, I hope you guys have a positive and productive week and I'll see you next week for a book chatter video. Bye.